Houston, we have a problem. This is a line from one of my favorite movies, Apollo 13. We replaced two circulating pumps for a customer in a 60-year-old school. Understandably, the six-decade-old isolation valves didn't work, forcing us to drain the entire hydronic system, something I hate doing on an old system. After replacing the pumps, we refilled the system with water. The techs called from the job and said they could not vent the air from the system, asking me what to do. Welcome, friends, to Boiler Room Detective Channel, where I'm your host, Ray Wolfarth. Today, we're investigating how to remove that stubborn air pocket in a hydronic system. Whether you're a seasoned professional or a newbie, I hope you learned something new from this video. When I arrived at the building, I looked at the radiator vents and tried opening two of them. They didn't budge. It felt like they were never opened. Afraid of breaking the vents, we entered the boiler room to reconsider our options. Then I saw them. Three quarter inch soft copper tubes with a valve on them. It made me smile. I had only seen this on one other project. The tubing went upstairs to the high point for each zone. The installer ran the tubing to the boiler room so you could vent each zone from there. I have been in this boiler room hundreds of times and never noticed them. We were able to vent the air from the system using these tubes. Venting air pockets can sometimes be demanding as you can't access where the air is trapped. The following are some tricks I've used to remove stubborn air pockets. I like increasing the system's static pressure. For example, most two-story homes or buildings are set for a system pressure of 12 psi. I check the relief valve set point and increase the system to 5 to 7 pounds less than the relief valve set pressure. For example, if the relief valve set point is 30 psi, I will set the static pressure for 22 to 25 psi. This does two things. The first is it reduces the size of the bubbles. This allows the bubbles to be more movable and they can be removed by the air separator. The second is the added pressure, which creates more force to push the air, pushing the air pocket along the piping. Another idea I use is to cycle the circulator pump on or off. The added pressure of the circulator starting can move the air pocket so it can be vented. On one project, we shut off the zone valves for several of the zones to force more water into the airbound zone. This will sometimes move the air pocket. However, it did have a bad side effect. The air pocket zoomed through the piping and hit the circulator, causing the bearing assembly to start leaking. Be careful of that one. Some systems have a hose bib connected to the return pipe. If you connect the hose to it and put the other end in a bucket, you can open the hose bib until the water bubbles stop. If there is a hose bib on the ends of the piping, you could do the same thing. If you find this video helpful, Give us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more expert advice and tips. Thanks for watching. If you would like to contact me, my contact information is here. In addition, I have two websites. Brewingwithsteam.com is focused on steam systems for breweries and distilleries. It includes a monthly blog about steam issues inside a brewery. My other site is fireiceheat.com. It's my company's website. It shows some of our capabilities. I have 12 boiler books and they're available on Amazon. My technical articles are included in these industry publications. Thanks for stopping by Boiler Room Detective, and I'll see you on the next case.